So I'm going to now take you through a practice, the loving kindness practice, before I'm going to touch on the theme today, which is why is it so difficult to forgive? Or why is forgiving so difficult? So allow me to lead you in this uh, mindful session using loving kindness practice. And those of you who have really learned it, great. You're going to drop right into it with ease. Those of you who may be doing it for the first time, the way we do it is that we're going to use six words called, may I be well and happy. Giving ourselves good wishes, wishing ourselves well, and wishing ourselves to be happy. Because many people are not very kind to themselves. Often you scold yourself more than you are complimentary or even just being kind. And if you make a mistake, it's okay. But often when we make a mistake, we tend to beat ourselves up. So this practice helps to soften the mind to make it kinder and more caring and loving, which is what our heart, when we cultivate a kind and good heart, our life will change for the better. Okay? So find yourself a comfortable position. How are your shoulders doing? Perhaps take a deep breath and just roll your shoulders forward three times. Good. And now the other way around, take a deep breath and open up your chest as wide as you can. And do a shoulder uh, head rotation and do it very gently. Respect the limits of your joints. Great. And now just stretch your arms up and reach for the ceiling. And you may feel the lower back pressure being released and your spinal cord lengthens. Just hold it there, remember to breathe and relax. Good. And now very gently close your eyes. And let's start with three beautiful deep breaths. And be aware of how this body is feeling. Any sensations in the body. Wake up the awareness to the body. And now we use the six words, may I be well and happy. And just repeat that in your mind. May I be well and happy. If you feel any resistance to the words, may I be well and happy. Perhaps you have some negative judgments about yourself. Put that aside. And continue to wish yourself, may I be well and happy. And if you still find that too hard, then change the last word to peaceful. May I be well and peaceful. And allow your body to feel the goodwill wishes, the kindness that you're directing to yourself. And now bring to mind someone you love and whoever pops up in your mind first, use that one and replace the I with the name of the person. May so-and-so be well and happy. And repeat that. And now bring to mind someone that you care about a lot. Again, whoever pops up first. Wish that person to be well and happy.
Now bring to mind someone you're grateful to and wish this person to be well and happy. Now bring to mind someone that who has done a lot for you or done favors for you, been kind to you, supported you in time of need. Whoever this person that pops up in your mind, wish this person to be well and happy. And now bring to mind a friend, any friend, and wish this friend to be well and happy. Now bring to mind someone who may have caused you hurt or upset you and wish this person to be well and happy. And notice if there is any changes in your body sensations, any muscles tightening up. And continue to say the six words, may so-and-so be well and happy. And now let's wish everyone in your family to be well and happy. So may my family be well and happy. And now may everyone in my country be well and happy, wherever you are, Singapore, UK, Malaysia, may everyone in my country be well and happy. And now expand it to the whole world. May everyone in this world be well and happy. Regardless of their race, their color, their religion, their gender, their sexual orientation, their shape, their form, Let's wish everyone in this world to be well and happy. Now coming back to the self, may I be well and happy. May I be well and happy. And say it three more times. And gently open your eyes. And smile. Now, as you were doing the practice just now, I wondered whether some of you may have experienced some tightness in the muscles as you thought of the person that upset you or may have caused you hurt. So even though the person is no longer in front of you and whatever has happened uh, took place this morning, yesterday, a week, a month, a year ago, the thought of that person could still have an effect on you. And that's because you haven't forgiven. So look at the harm it has on your body because that tension is actually a result of your stress response system being activated. That just the thought of that person has been sensed as a threat by your brain. So each time you think of the person or what happened causes your body to react. And this causes a tension and you may feel it in the chest or in the shoulders. It may also be happening in your stomach. It may also now be causing more blood to be going up your head, which could result in headaches, indigestion, irritable bowel syndrome, backache. Your blood pressure may be going up because you may even notice your heartbeat going faster. So there are adverse effects in holding on to something that you feel was unfair to you. That you hold on to a grudge. It is just not healthy. So if you care about your body, your health, your mind, your own well-being and your happiness, it is certainly worth your while 
to learn how to forgive. For some people, forgiving someone is quite easy and also quite natural. For some people, it isn't. It may have to do with the conditioning of how you were when you were younger, that your parents may be encouraging or discouraging of you being forgiving. If you have grown up with people around you that may be saying to you, why should you forgive? Strike back, get even. Then it's more likely that you're going to hold on to the grudge and waiting one day for you to strike back, to get even or even get ahead. But in the meantime, you may not realize that it is actually causing your body, your health harm. When you are able to forgive, your chest becomes lighter. You feel better and your happiness increases. So as an example, if one of you was speaking to me and may have said something that I felt offended by, I felt hurt. And I say to you, I didn't like what you said. You offended me. And your perspective was, you didn't mean to offend me. It was a rather harmless statement. It was the truth. But I said, no, that was offensive. And I'm waiting for you to apologize. But you feel, well, there was nothing wrong in what you said. So why should you apologize? So in the meantime, I'm fuming, my body's getting warmer and hotter and I'm turning into a monster and incredible Hulk because I'm just angry that you're not apologizing because I felt offended. Who is suffering? I am, I am really suffering. And I have now given my key to my happiness to you because as long as you don't apologize, I'm gonna hold this against you. And I'm the one who's burning inside. I'm waiting for you to apologize. And as long as you don't apologize, I'm gonna be mad. Boy, am I punishing myself? Am I torturing myself? What if I can say, you know what? I can forgive you. You didn't mean harm. You didn't mean to hurt me. And even if you did, I'm not going to take it in an offensive way. Even if you call me a chink, which is a derogatory term for Chinese, I said, yeah, so what? It's just a word. I'm not going to get offended and insulted by a word chink. When I don't let it offend me, it doesn't hurt. And if I can say, I'm going to forgive you anyway, even if you meant to hurt me, I'm going to forgive you. I'm the one who's going to benefit. It's not about you deserving to be forgiven. It's about me being able to let go. Life is not about keeping score. It's not about winning. It's about cultivating a kind heart, a good heart that can live from one moment to another, cherishing, savoring what's coming our way. And even if something is difficult, it's an opportunity for us to practice extending our limits of our kindness, of our wisdom, of our courage and a capacity to take in more so that our, our mind will never be defeated by a few words? No. We're not gonna let the peace in our mind be swept away by a few words. That wouldn't be wise, would it? The wind doesn't blow us away and we let a few words get into our mind and exploding in here. So I'd like to urge you to consider forgiving those who have hurt you. 
because you are the biggest winner. You are the one who's going to unlock the door to the cage that you have put yourself in. The cage of anger. The cage of resentment. So be kind to yourself by learning to let go and forgive. You don't have to forget because you learn a lesson and you are going to be wiser next time. But you can certainly forgive because it's a benefit to you, your health and your relationships. So I hope this little talk makes you look at things a little bit differently from a different perspective and makes it easier for you to consider forgiving. I have a great teacher. When he was asked, how many times should one forgive? And his answer is one more time. And that's what I practice on the people who can hurt me the most. How many times? One more time. And that's why I can smile. I can do the work that I do because it's about doing the practice. Take care. Bye-bye.